Well, as you will know, we are engaged in a little series of uh, ruminations in various fields of the culture, uh, lit literary and otherwise, which relate to the uh, to esoteric concerns, particularly uh, owing to my own dedications in that area to the Gnostic uh, tradition. And this evening we have come to uh, motion pictures, more particularly in a, uh, by way of uh, a uh, sort of reality paradigm arising um, as the resulting part of uh, these particular um, uh, motion pictures to the uh, uh, Matrix uh, series. Now, uh, in order to uh, put that into a proper perspective, um, I uh, will need to do a, a bit of uh, um, overall introductory material uh, about the uh, uh, cultural influence of uh, the motion picture, and especially, I think, uh, how the, uh, um, the motion pictures of... Uh, several past decades have gradually influenced our uh, relationship to um, reality and uh, to the possibility of alternative realities and so forth, which reaches perhaps um, its uh, climax, I think, in the uh, Matrix and possibly some other pictures now which will um, uh, follow upon them because um, if there is uh, uh, if there is anything that uh, uh, one can find um, frequently in the motion picture industry, it is uh, the art of imitation, uh, particularly if something is successful. So there will be a, there will be imitation matrices of one kind or the other as time goes on. I am sure. Um, now. Um, there is nothing uh, as uh, impressive and as instructive as experience. So I will kind of start a little bit with uh, some experiences of my own um, early on in my life and thereafter, which uh, convinced me of the uh, reality altering capacity of motion pictures. I well remember in my uh, uh, early youth uh, when I was in Austria going to school and to university in uh, Innsbruck in the Tyrol, um, were, were very bad times, uh, uh, you know, in the immediate aftermath of the war. There was uh, a lot of misery and a lot of poverty and a lot of unhappiness. Um, speaking of uh, motion pictures, it was sort of the world of the third, of the movie The Third Man. The Third Man played in Vienna, but uh, the the uh, the atmosphere, the milieu that it depicted existed in other places as well. And uh, as little more, uh, as poor as we were, uh, uh, I and my friends uh, would from uh, time to time scrape, scrape up a little money and go to the movies. And what we usually went to were these um, uh, marvelous uh, uh, American movies largely coming out of the MGM that were, you know, incredible spectaculars of, uh, of dance, of music, of uh, swimming, of, of drama, of everything under the sun, uh, an absolutely uh, uh, overwhelming fantasy world um, with such people whom probably since all of you are younger than I, you wouldn't remember, as the pianist Jose Turbi, um, the, uh, 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 the young, then young uh, singer who used to be called the American Nightingale, Jane Powell, the Olympic swimming champion, Esther Williams, who uh, looked very good in a bathing suit and uh, would, uh, would uh, jump into the, the water to the accompaniment of gigantic orchestras, and, uh, you know, I mean, absolutely incredible things, but, uh, you know, um, uh, upon us in our uh, 
uh, rather unhappy state, these movies had a, a tremendous effect. Um, and uh, why? In retrospect, I feel that they had that effect because they literally took us into another, in this case, much uh, more pleasant and promising and glorious reality than the uh, terrible reality within which we existed. Well, a few years later, I found myself in the midst of uh, this other reality right here in Hollywood when I moved here to the very place where those realities were created and made that I was originally so happy about. Uh, and uh, even to sort of uh, had some tangential minor associations over the years with the motion picture industries. All the studios were still located uh, here. Um, I, uh, uh, I had several, uh, uh, several interviews with Otto Preminger, who was one of the most feared people in the studios because of his temper and sort of general peevishness, uh, but I must say that he was uh, absolutely uh, perfect and, and, uh, and uh, polite gentleman in all his encounters with me. Uh, I, uh, I even eventually, outside of the studios, met, uh, uh, met Esther Williams and her daughter, who were in the 70s, who were both terribly interested in tarot cards. And I read the tarot cards for both of them. <laughs> he, was the, he was the lady whom I remembered in the bathing suit with the big orchestra, you know. And, um, but she was a little bit older by then, but still. Um, so um, uh, I continued to observe, uh, of course, the, uh, the, the movies, uh, particularly in terms of their ability to, uh, what I would say, to uh, introduce our consciousness to other realities. And what would be more apt to uh, uh, do that and to be related to that than the science fiction and horror genre. And so through the 50s and the 60s and beyond, I um, was a great devotee of those uh, films. Um, uh, and you know, they were, they were particularly fabulous and fantastic. Uh, in the 50s and there around. Um, very unnatural looking, but huge giant insects and other creatures, uh, overgrown, uh, overgrown ants, tarantula spiders, crabs, um, oh heaven knows what all else, eventually culminating in the attack of the killer tomatoes, uh, which some of you may remember and which was really more along the line of the spoof of that genre of science fiction movie. Um, also mad scientists threatening the world. Uh, after all, who can forget uh, my countryman, the eight, then aged Bela Lugosi in Ed Wood's uh, really, uh, in retrospect, rather dreadful picture, Bride of the Monster, uh, wherein uh, uh, somebody comes to his habitat uh, and uh, tells him what a nice home he has, which is an overstatement. And uh, the mad scientist played by Bela says, if I can recall correctly, home? I have no home. The jungle is my home, living like an animal, hunted, despised. But one day I will create a race of atomic supermen who will conquer the world. Uh, <laughs> since uh, we are both Hungarians, I, I can mimic his accent with a reasonable approximation. <coughs> you know, um, um, who would have thought that the creator of uh, that film and the number of others, Ed Wood, would himself become a, a sort of a, an icon, a, a, a cult figure many, many years later when, of course, the poor man could not profit by his fame any longer. <laughs> uh, and so I, I observed throughout the, the years and the decades that the medium of motion picture was certainly a reality modifier 
and at times even an outright reality creator. Um, it also became a reality extender uh, long before we saw um, the first actual astronauts walking on the moon. Uh, we saw over and over make-believe astronauts cavorting, fighting, and engaging in various exploits on imaginary celestial worlds. Um, it, of course, into that category we may also include the redoubtable Bar Barbarella, uh, and I always felt that the 